MJ16 P42 question 12. Let's start off with something that requires not much calculation, but lots and lots of explanation. Look at all that. Okay, so you gotta hopefully by now already watch the theory video about how x-rays are produced and the things we do to get a good image, good nice beam and what you can control on the x-ray to change the intensity and the hardness of the x-ray. So those are facts that you gotta memorize because you have to write essays like this. High energy electrons collide with a metal target producing x-ray photons. Okay, very good. The variation is shown. So the x-ray will be at this huge range of wavelengths, all at different intensities. It's a particular shape to that. The first thing they ask you to do is explain why there is a continuous distribution of wavelengths. Yeah, it means I thought I thought at discrete energy levels should have just lines like that. If this is wavelength. But why is it continuous? That's because the photons that are emitted here is not from the target of the metal target. It's actually from a different phenomenon. So let's write that down. If you remember what the uh, phenomenon is. Oh my goodness. So how does it work? In the metal target, there are kind of an, a bunch of atoms here. And the atoms have the electric field, which is pretty big. I mean, these are charged particles. So when you have high energy electrons coming in, pew, 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 they can come in like here, get affected and bend a little bit. They slow down. This is what we call breaking acceleration. It's a change in velocity. Or they could come in and smack on and hit something. They could come in and maybe be unaffected. Or they could just pretty much go anywhere they want. <laughs> but a bunch of electrons will come in and they all go at different, different angles. But you see this first one up here. When there is a bend, there's some kind of acceleration, and that's when a photon will come out of a certain energy. Okay, so the speed will decrease, photon comes out when there's this kind of thing. So all these electrons here, every single one of them can have their own acceleration, can bend differently, can deflect in a certain way, can collide. So there's like all kinds of wavelengths coming out, and we're going to write about that. So we can say that the photons uh, in, the, in the range of X-ray energy Okay, that very small wavelength. So the photons emitted, photons are emitted when the high energy incoming electron, so I'll just say incoming electron is suddenly accelerated. Now accelerated here does not mean get faster, okay? Acceleration can be in any direction. Can mean slowing down, can be getting faster, can be changing direction. But you see this change in direction? Okay, so we just say there's some acceleration happening there. So it's suddenly accelerated. And there are so many electrons. So we're going to talk about that. So there are a range of accelerations. Accelerations of electrons when they're inside the metal target. In metal target. Okay. And because each one of them accelerate differently, release a certain wavelength, this one also releases a different wavelength, slightly different wavelength, uh, different, different, different wavelength all come out. Hence, there is a continuous distribution of energy. So, hence, there is a continuous distribution of no space wavelengths i'm just gonna put there lambda see so this curve lambda is a nice smooth continuous distribution instead of like distinct lines like this one this one this one this one oh there might be something to do with these though those are the distinct uh emission spectra lines but the rest of it is x-ray is like everywhere all over the place so there's three marks for this one the first one is if you talk about the photon that are emitted when an incoming electron is suddenly accelerated. So photons and acceleration put together. Okay, electrons accelerated. Let's put that here. The second one is there are range of accelerations. So range of accelerations. Because so many, so many, so many possible accelerations can happen. Different direction and different everything. And because there is a range, this important word, therefore there's a continuous distribution of all the wavelengths. So ah, I'm blocking it in my head, like that. Okay, next. Explain why there is a sharp cutoff at the short wavelength. What is this sharp cutoff? 
So you look at the graph again. This year is your cutoff wavelength. Very short. Which also means this is the highest energy photon that came out from the interaction between the electrons and the met target metal. So why do we have so why is there a cutoff there? What is the possible highest energy? Well you can think of it this way. Imagine there is a I mean you have like the metal here, atoms inside there. You come in electrons and instead of bending all over the place like the other one, you just head on collision and then all the energy given to a photon. Zoom, 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 zoom. So the electron just completely stop moving. That's what I call a head-on collision. You can call it that way. So you can say that the incoming electron electrons uh electron no no not electrons. The incoming electron is stopped. It completely stopped moving. Stop in a single collision. Wow! Then where all the energy go? Release photon. So, energy is all given to one photon of very high energy. That's why the wavelength is so short. Okay, don't forget your E equals to HC over lambda. If your energy is very big, means your wavelength is very small. So all that you give to one photon. Okay, that's how I can explain that thing. Okay, so many, many possible interactions that can happen inside the atom. This one, there's two marks. You say, uh, stop in a single collision. There's one. And also energy given to one photon. All energy. Oh, so all energy is given, that's a better way, given to one photon. There we go. That's how I can talk about What's happening here in the photons and things like that. Okay, the third one. Why are there a bunch of peaks superimposed on the continuous distribution of wavelengths? What are the peaks that they're talking about? Well, look at these sharp little fellas. What are these? What are those? Why do they have a specific wavelength? So hopefully you remember, remember this fact from the theory video earlier. So these are what you call part of the emission spectra but of who whose emission spectra the rest of the wavelengths all come from breaking radiation of electrons changing direction collision then they release energy but where do these specific lines come from well your metal target is a specific thing right it could be a tungsten element or whatever Tungsten, whatever element you want, that can be your metal target. And each metal, each element has its own emission spectra. Oh, remember the previous video about this? Okay, so let's write that down. So how do we explain that? Uh, let's see. Electrons come in and collide, but inside these, these, um, these, 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 these atoms, you can zoom in, and you will see our good old energy levels, nucleus, many, 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 many energy levels, and the transition between energy levels, let's say from here to here, from high to a low energy level, that has a very specific wavelength, and only that wavelength, a certain energy. So that is zooming into the atom. Lah. These are the atoms here. Zoom in. So if this is tungsten, then you will see the line spectra of tungsten. So we're going to say that the uh, if uh, uh, incoming electron, I'm going to write E here, for shortcut, if incoming electron collides with an atom, then what happens to the orbital electrons? The electrons are in the orbit. Well, they can either excite or de-excite. So orbital electrons, I'm just write E again, in the metal target. De-excite. And emit photons of oh no space a specific wavelength. Oh, I wrote the full sentence, but you don't have to write such detail. But anyway, this one only one mark, ah, So back to energy level and line spectra. Okay, if your electron collide with the atom in the orbital, the 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 at the, the electrons inside the orbits can just de-excite and say, oh, here's a photon, throw it out. Only a specific wavelength will come out. 
Okay, let's move on. More explanations. In the X-ray imaging, oh, now we go to imaging part. When you're imaging, longer photons are filtered out. How do we filter out longer wavelength photons? So longer, longer wavelength photons uh, in X-ray language is what we, are what we call soft X-rays. And we really don't want them though. Why? Uh? Okay, we'll write that next. So why don't we want longer wavelength photons? Well, dangerous, but how we can do that is, this one you can memorize the fact, we usually add uh, aluminium. Aluminum or alum oh my goodness, how to spell aluminum? It's always different every time I think about it. Aluminum sheet or filter. So maybe you have a bunch of x-rays coming in. Some are soft x-rays with a different wavelength, some are longer, longer. soft x-rays, hard x-rays, short wavelength, long wavelength. But you just say, well, I just want the hard x-ray. So I don't want all these longer wavelengths. So I put aluminum filter. And only some of them will come through. The rest get filtered out. Okay, so maybe I'll put here a few more. The rest all gone. Or why don't we want those soft X-rays or longer wavelengths? That's because we filter out the, filter out longer wavelength photons, also known as soft X-rays. So that they do not pass through. So you're protecting the human body. Pass through the human body. Okay, there's a reason why they can't go very far in human body. Because the body will absorb these things fully. And we really don't want that. We want the x-rays to go through the human body. Mostly lah. Change the intensity a little bit. But not completely absorb. We don't want that. No, no, no. It's going to be so dangerous. So if you look at the graph, I'm going to scroll back up. This graph, how do you know if it's soft or hard X-ray? Well, usually you can say that uh, in this diagram, there's a peak here, right, of this distribution, continuous distribution of curve. This part is what we call here the hard X-rays, the very high energy, short wavelengths. These are the ones we want to use Yay, we want to use these in X-ray imaging. But the other part, this part, the longer wavelengths, we call soft X-rays. And as we learned in the theory video, we don't want to use this if possible. So we put a filter to get rid of them. We want to reduce the soft X-rays. All right, so that's all for this question. A good summary kind of thing of all the, not all, most of the main ideas that you need to know about X-ray production and why you do certain things and how you adjust certain things. So that's all for this video. We'll go on to the next part where you'll look about how else, what other things you can adjust to change the image of this x-ray machine. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.